Hey everyone and welcome. My name is Johnny Burger and I am coming to you from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. Unfortunately, we can only do this conference remotely, which means that I am at home and you are at home and you don't see me personally, but you just see a video. But it's not so bad. I can make a more interesting video, I can choose different angles and I can edit out all the mistakes that I make. <laughs> Have you seen the Apple keynote recently? Now that they pre-record everything, their videos are much more dynamic and much more enjoyable to view. Anyway, how we normally edit these videos are graphical programs like Adobe Premiere, iMovie, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve. But for me as a developer, something has always been missing. I want to reuse elements in my video and parameterize them like I do with React components. I want something that is more dynamic than just copy and pasting layers and undoing and redoing my actions. I want something that is more declarative. Also version control is horrible for videos. If I save my project, close the program and reopen it up, then basically all my history is gone and I only have a snapshot, snapshot of the current time unless I make copies of my file, v1, v2, file extensions and like that. And sometimes the program, it will just crash and all my progress is gone. I hope you see where I am going with this. I want to write videos programmatically. So I made a library called Remotion, which allows you to write real MP4 videos declaratively in React. And I am such a big believer in it that this video itself was edited in React using Remotion, at least all the video that I am submitting to React Summit. And this is also an open source video so you can go to the GitHub link you see on the right right now and uh, visit the source code of the video. All the footage is there and all the edits and all the slides written in React. Making a video in React sounds like something very magical, but it is actually not and it is not a black box. And in order to use Remotion correctly, we actually need to know how it works. So let's take a bird eye view at how Remotion turns code into a video. We start off in a React project and we define a composition. A composition is basically a video, um, but it has some metadata on it that we have to define. Um, we have to pass in the width, the height the duration and the frame rate of the video and which component will be used to render the video. Inside that component, we need to call the use current frame hook to basically get back the current time. And based on that time, which is expressed as the current frame, which is an integer, we need to render anything that we want using our favorite web technologies. And it is important that we use this frame variable to drive our animation rather than something else like a CSS transition. More on that later. So once we have um, written our video, we enter a three stage rendering process. The first step is to bundle the video using Webpack, much like any other web application. In the second step, we open a headless Chromium instance and uh, open the web page in it and then take a screenshot for each frame of the video. To make this process efficient and fast, we need to parallelize it. So we, we actually open multiple tabs. The number depends on the number of cores of your CPU uh, or you can also customize it. 
but uh, you want to uh, have some kind of parallelism if you can afford it. Um, so we open multiple tabs and make multiple screenshots at the same time. And this is the reason why it's very important that we use the use current frame hook to drive all our animation. Because if you use something like a CSS transition or you use request animation frame or you try to include a GIF, it will not work because during rendering we open multiple instances of um, your animation and pretty much only works if given if I give you a frame, you must return a static image um, that does not have any side effects. If you have any side effects where things will animate without the current time that Remotion says it is changing, then the video will have some artifacts or have some lag. So, but um, assuming you don't tap over the stone, um, we can then take all the frames, collect them in the third step and stitch them together using FFmpeg. And ta-da, we have a real video that we can then post on social media, for example. Of course, there's much more to it, like how to add audio, but um, I think this is the most important concept in Remotion that you should know. It's time for a quick demo. Let's create our first video together. To get started, we simply open up the terminal and type in yarn create video. And the installation has finished. So let's CD into, um, our, into our video and open it up in VS Code. Also, once we have done that, let's run npm start to open up the development server. And you will see that we will get a visual preview of the video. Let's wait a moment until it's uh, done loading and there we go. As you can see, there is a Hello World project included in Remotion. And there's also a timeline with which you can um, essentially control the current frame. So I have made a quick cut to um, adjust my project a little bit. I removed all the Hello World stuff and uh, replaced it with a black canvas. Also, I have upgraded the Remotion version to a version that will be out by the time that you watch this video, but it was not out at the time that I was recording. Anyway, um, so this is how we define a uh, composition in this entry file of Remotion and we define the ID, the width, the height, the duration and the frame rate of a video as well as the component as I have previously mentioned. We can also have multiple compositions. Um, they need to have uh, different IDs um, and then you can just switch in the left sidebar between them. So, and I have replaced this with a black canvas. And now I want to uh, tell you my idea of what kind of video we can make together. I saw on Twitter that React Summit is making a graphic for each speaker and uh, posting it. It um, has like the profile picture, the talk name, and everything about each speaker on it. And uh, I also noticed that there's like a JSON file in the source code of the React Summit website that contains all the speakers. So I thought it would be fun to create all these graphics at once and also animate them so they are a video, not an image. So this is what I've done. I've um, imported the list of all React speakers into this project. To get started, we don't have much time, so I'm gonna code something really quick. See you in a second. This is what I have quickly created in pretty much normal React markup and CSS. As you can see, I did not use any library. You can use any library that you want, um, but here I just um, did this with um, normal, normal markup and 
CSS. Um, just one thing to note, instead of a lowercase image tag, I used the image component from Remotion. It works pretty much exactly the same as the native image element, except that it's wrapped in a loader that will wait until the image is loaded before it renders the frame so that your video will not contain an image that is not fully loaded. Also, I have um, added some circles here in the background using SVG, which is also pretty cool. Anyway, so now that uh, we have this uh, basic setup, which I did not go through in full detail because you probably already know a little bit of React at least, um, let's animate it. So we need to drive all our animations using the use current frame hook. So I'm gonna say const frame equals use current frame. And now we need to animate things over time. Let's say we want to animate the profile picture so that it scales up. For that, we can use the interpolate helper function in Remotion. I'm gonna say scale, and I'm going to interpolate the scale over time. So what I mean by that is, I pass in what drives the animation, the frame, and I say an input range, I say from 0 to 30, so that basically means that the duration of the animation is 30 frames. I'm just going to say it will scale from 0 to 1. Now I just apply this style using normal CSS um, to the image. And as you can see, my image is scaling in over the duration of one second. So it doesn't look that smooth, which is why I actually prefer to use a spring animation. So let's get rid of that and say const scale equals spring. For that we need to pass in the frame and also the current frames per second. So there's the necessary information for that the spring function needs to know in order to calculate the video. Um, yeah, let's just give this a try and uh, there we go. It's animating in. Um, let's also pass this scale to our circles in the background. All right, looking pretty good, right? Let's Let's slide in the title as well. So we can say const title, mm, title translation, for example. And I love to use spring animations for everything. Let's pass in FPS and frame, but this time let's do it a bit more advanced. We can play around with the physical parameters of our spring animation. What I like to do is, I like to increase the damping so that it will, it will not overshoot. As you can see here, it overshoots and then becomes uh, smaller again. Also, I want to delay this transition so that the animation doesn't immediately start. So for that, I simply lie to the spring function which frame it currently is. And I say, actually, it is 20 frames earlier than you think it is. So let's, um, so now that value goes from zero to one as any spring animation does. So we actually also need to interpolate it so that the range is not between zero and one, but something like zero and 1000. So in here, the input range is zero and one and we say um, zero to 1000. I'm going to pass a transform. A 
Okay, so I made a small mistake there. I accidentally animated in my name instead of the talk title. And uh, also it's going down instead of up. But of course with fast refresh we can easily fix these things. So we actually want to animate in from 1000 to zero. And let's take a look at how that looks like. All right. Let's also apply this translation really quick to all the other elements. Um, so that I think it will look good. I'm just gonna copy paste it over here. Maybe uh, you will find a more engineered way to do so. Um, but I think this gets the job done quickly. This is how our video is now looking like. Nice. Now for what I think is the most fun part, let's turn one video into dozens of videos. Let's create one of these animations for each of the speakers that appear on React Summit. For this, I have already as shown uh, before, imported a JSON file into the project where all the metadata is uh, there. And I'm just gonna use dot map to iterate over each speaker and return a composition for them. So it might look something like that. Let's give each one a unique key. And uh, also very handy that there's like a slug property on, on each speaker. Um, yeah, there we go. And now as you can see, all the speakers are in the left sidebar. Um, so now let's make the composition also dynamic by allowing the component to take some props. So let's say speaker name should be a string, company should be a string, our tar URL can also be a string, and uh, what else is missing? Talk title. I'm just gonna accept these. And speaker name. And fill them in, in my video. And uh, here I have a small naming conflict um, with a style, so I'm just gonna do this. Let's put this as the talk title. This is the speaker. And uh, sorry, I have uh, another naming conflict. I hope this will now solve it. Okay, it was just an indentation problem. Never mind, never mind. Okay, and here let's put the avatar URL. Here we can define some default props for each composition. And I see and I say default because these props can later be overwritten on the command line. So um, but for the preview here in the browser, which can gonna put some default props. The avatar URL is gonna be speaker dot avatar company speaker dot company speaker name speaker dot name and the talk name speaker dot okay. and let's do speaker dot activities um, dot talks zero dot title I think that's gonna be it um, And let's cast this to a string. <laughs> there we go. So here we have one for Brandon Bayer. Here we have Brent Watnistak. Lee Robinsons. So now let's make an MP4 video out of it. Let's take the video from Can't See Dots. I'm just gonna copy the composition ID of his talk. And I'm just gonna put this into my build command. 
um, which uh, you can execute using npm run build as a shorthand, or you can write all of this out. So let's write this to kent.mp4 and run npm run build. And uh, yeah, this will take a few seconds. You can get a taste of how long it takes to render a two second video. Here you can see my for my laptop, it shows the 8x concurrency. So it makes eight screenshots at the same time. And the video has been created. Let's have a look. And here we have an announcement of can see dots talk fireside chat with can see dots. I've only been able to barely touch the surface of what Remotion can do. Few things that you could explore next. Um, the first thing is sequences, which is a construct that allows you to shift time, which is uh, really handy if you have multiple scenes that you want to work on individually and then you want to put them together and that they play after each other, which really uh, helps you um, to organize your code and um, organization and reusability and encapsulation is the key to scaling up your video production. Another thing is audio support. By the time that you are watching this, we will have launched audio support. Um, you will be able to do things like have um, as many tracks as you want, you will be able to change the volume on a per frame basis and you will be able to cut and trim audio. Um, another big topic, server-side rendering. Um, so how to render a video based on an API call. For all these things, I would recommend you to check out the documentation at remotion.dev where we will explain all these topics and we also have some video tutorials there to help you understand the in and outs of Remotion. Also remember that this talk is open source and by that I don't just mean the slides, but like the whole video, everything that you saw was edited using Remotion and you can check out, uh, you can check it out with the link that is on screen now. Yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for hearing me out. Um, I will be live for a Q&A right after this talk and I hope you will afterwards also enjoy the other talks of this evening.